Hello guys, welcome to the new video and welcome to the forest. Today's video I want to talk about forest photography, which is basically photographing the beautiful forest around you. But also know that forest photography is not the easiest type of photography to get started with. There's definitely like a learning curve to this type of photography. Because in the beginning, especially in the beginning, you see a lot of trees around you and you don't really know what to make out of them. They don't really look appealing, they look a bit like messy, there are too many around you. But in this video I'm gonna give you some tips, some tricks that you can use to make some good photos in the forest. Tip one is finding composition. And this is definitely the hardest part. So let's you know get the hardest part out of the way immediately. And finding composition is tricky because you really need to develop an eye for it. That's with all types of photography, not just forest photography. But there are some tips, you know, to develop that eye a little bit faster. And what you can do in the forest, especially look out for trees that look different. They may have fallen over, they may have a lot of moss on them, they might be dead, they might have a weird shape. These are all tips that you can use to find trees that makes for exciting photos. What you can also do to make these photos a little bit more interesting is to make use of contrast. If you found a tree that looks really interesting, really green, really brown, really yellow, really dead, you can post them on a normal background. Like the trees in the background look completely fine, look completely normal, as this really helps to make the tree that looks special stand out. Leading lines are also very important in forest photography. For those who don't know what leading lines are, leading lines is basically that something that leads your eye through the photo, makes you look deep into the photo if you will. And in the forest these are basically one of two things, either a path or a river. Again I will post photos on the screen, post photos that I have made to show you what I mean. Tip number two is all about light. The light is super important in forest photography. It's important in all types of photography. But if you're in a dark forest or a dark part of the forest, what you can do to make interesting photos is to follow the light. So what you want to do is you want to see where the sun is at in the sky and you want to see where it shines on. And this really helps to isolate subjects because often it shines on nice part of trees, on uh, plants, on the path, on the little river that shines throughout the forest. And these are some really interesting shots where you really have a nice isolated subject and a dark background. Again, photos are on the screen to show you what I mean. And even if the light is harsh outside, like right now here in Austria, it's a summer morning and it's a pretty harsh light. But it doesn't mean that it's the same in the forest. So you can go on a summer day, you can go into the forest, it's nice, it's a little bit cooler there anyway. And you can get some nice images with soft lights because the light gets filtered through all the leaves, for all, I don't know, the plants maybe, and that leaves a really soft, nice light. What you can also do to make interesting photos is to make use of golden hour. Golden hour is the first half an hour after sunrise and it's basically the last hour before sunset. I think that's correct. And golden hour is basically it creates this really soft beautiful sunlight. 
And out of the two of them, I prefer the morning. Uh, this advantage that you have to get up really early, especially in summer. I think in Austria you have to get up at maybe four in the morning if you want to be on time to get like this really nice soft sunlight in your photos. But often it's really worth it. Again, photos will be on the screen of what I mean. Number three is all about the four different seasons that we have. And it's basically to shoot the same part of the forest throughout all different seasons. As with every season, the whole forest looks completely different. In spring, we get the nice green leaves that look really nice with the cherry blossom. You can make some really cool photos with those. In summer, it's a little bit tricky because as I just said, in summer, like the golden hour light is very nice, but you have to get up really early to photograph that, like three, four in the morning. You need to be out there. Not many people do that. And then during the day, it's a little bit tricky because often you don't want to go outside. It's way too hot, too humid, too sweaty. So you just want to be inside. But if you do decide to go to the forest, you can make use of my other tips like look where the light shines on, isolate those objects, use the light get gets filtered through the leaves, make some interesting photos that way. And of course, summer evenings are absolutely amazing. Really nice to photograph. So make the best of that. And then there's of course autumn. Autumn is my favorite season to shoot in, to photograph the nice leaves that look orange, red, yellow and often there's also fog in the forest and fog is a condition and we'll talk about conditions a little bit later but it's my favorite condition in the forest it looks really mysterious really amazing I love it but it doesn't happen that much and winter the last season a little bit tricky as well a little bit difficult because often the whole forest is dead it's really empty, but if it snows, that can make for some really interesting photos. Uh, it doesn't snow that much in this part of Austria, so a little bit hard. But if you live in a part where it snows a lot, go out there, make the snow photographs. They look really cool as well. Tip number four is conditions. Some conditions that help to create nice photos in the forest are rain, an overcast day, sunshine and fog. And yes, I said rain as the first condition. Even if it rains a lot, please do go into the forest because it really helps to create some atmospheric, moody photos that looks extremely nice. I will post some of my rainy moody photos on the screen so you can see what I mean. And of course sunshine, we talked about sunshine uh, quite a lot actually uh, already. I uh, said follow the light, look, to where, look where the light shines on, make use of the light that gets filtered throughout all the leaves, create some cool photos uh, that way. And even an overcast day is not a bad day to go into the forest, even if the light looks completely uninspiring outside of the forest, does not mean it doesn't look interesting inside the forest. Again, photos will be on the screen and fog that's really is my favorite condition of the for of to be in the forest if you see it's foggy outside grab your camera grab your stuff and go into the forest looks amazing I think every photographer basically uh, agrees with me every landscape photographer will say the same thing fog is the best condition to be in the forest get some really moody Great photos, again, on the screen. And tip number five is not really a tip, but it's more to let you know that it takes quite a long time before you will get good at forest photography. It requires practice. You will need to go into the forest with a camera once a week, or twice a week, three times a week would be even perfect. You shoot under different lighting conditions, during different seasons, during different weather conditions to develop your own style of forest photography. 
But with the tips that I just gave you, with the ideas that I just gave you, this should go a little bit faster, a little bit more fluent, so that we can all watch and enjoy your beautiful forest photography. And those were the tips and the ideas that I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope you learned something, I hope it was useful. If you did learn something, please leave me a like, it would be very much appreciated. If you want to see more forest photography, please subscribe as I go into the forest very often. Thank you guys for watching and see you, hopefully see you in the next video.